Hi, um, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. A uh, small request: uh, we ensure all of uh, we request all of you to uh, keep your mics on mute uh, and your videos on uh, switched off. Uh, for those of you who have joined us on Zoom, uh, to ensure smooth running of the session, um, we're really glad to be able to resume our monthly screenings and discussions around them in this new format. Uh, post screening discussions have always been important for us. Um, as a way of not only opening up conversations around issues presented in the film, uh, but also uh, to better understand the process and language of filmmaking itself. Um, if you'd like to uh, receive updates on future screenings and discussions, please do register with us. Um, for those on Zoom, the link is in the chat box. And for those on Facebook, the link can be found in the comment section of this video. Uh, so the film we're discussing today is uh, Being Bhaijan. Uh, I hope everyone has had a chance to watch it. Uh, for those who haven't been able to, I'll just read out the synopsis. Posters of his dance shows say that Shan Ghosh, a Salman Khan lookalike by profession and passion, is the junior Salman of Nagpur. He's Hamara Salman on the very intense Jai Salman WhatsApp group and a beloved bhai to textile salesman Balram, an engineer at Heart Bhaskar. Along with other Salman fans, they've launched a collective search for a larger identity to replace the very ordinary one life handed out to them. Being Bhaijan explores Indian masculinity by mapping out the emotional, spiritual, and philosophical contribution Salman Khan makes in the lives of three men in small town India who find themselves increasingly disassociated with a changing country, its competitiveness, and its new woman. To find solace in a notion of manhood constructed brick by brick through a superstar's perceived personality, which is as old as, which is as old world as Salman Khan's films. So the film is directed by Shabani Hasanwalia and Sabreen Farooqi, both of whom have joined us today. Uh, they founded Hit and Run Films in 2005. Uh, it's an independent video production unit which engages with uh, changing socio-political personal realities through documentaries. Uh, video art and intervention films. They work as directors, editors, camera persons, and writers. Their first feature of a documentary, Out of Thin Air, on Ladakhi local cinema and funded by India Foundation for the Arts, was an official selection at the International Film Festival of Rotterdam and was the opening film at Film South Asia in 2009, besides playing at numerous other festivals. Their feature documentary, Online and Available, released in 2012, told a story of an India in transition through its online identity formation. It was produced by the Public Service Broadcasting Trust and was an official selection at Mumbai International Film Festival in 2012. They've worked as associate directors and editors of Star by Debakar Banerjee as a part of the Bombay Talkies Omnibus in 2013 to celebrate 100 years of Indian cinema. Their film, Being Bhaijan, is a story about masculinity in India through Salman Khan's fans. It played at New York Indian Film Festival in 2015 and was broadcast on Channel 4 in the United Kingdom. Their most recent film is Gully, about the contemporary street culture in the city of New Delhi and is made possible by a grant from the India Foundation for the Arts with support from Titan Company Limited. So before we get into the discussion, I thought it would be a good idea to do a quick poll to check how many Salman Khan fans we have in the room. Uh, so those on Zoom uh, can vote on the poll and those joining us on Facebook can respond with yes or no in the comments section of this video. Uh, so there you are. So are you a Salman Khan fan? Yes or no? Uh, so let's take maybe 30 seconds to respond after which we can announce the results and go ahead into the conversation. There are more no's than yeses. So far, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, let's end the poll. We have quite a few responses. Uh, so the no's still a maximum. Uh, there are um, so 19% of the people have said they are Salman Khan fans and we hope to hear from them uh, in the course of this conversation. 
and 81% of the people here have said they are not fans of Salman Khan. Um, so, Shabani, Samreen, do you, maybe we can start with, um, you mentioned, you've mentioned in the director's note that um, you heard from a friend about uh, the viewing experience in a Salman Khan uh, film in Wanted in 2009. Uh, and that's how the idea sort of came about. But how did you uh, meet uh, Shan Ghosh and why did you decide to make the film with him? Uh, yeah, so I think the story about us wanting to make this film uh, is quite, I mean, we've talked about it extensively. And, you know, it took us a few years to kind of come around the fact that this was, uh, this was something burning in us and we needed to do something about it. And we started to look out for people. And at that point in time, I think social media was just starting off. It, it had taken off, Facebook had taken off, but it wasn't really, uh, you know, that popular. But we did, that was the medium that, one of the many mediums that we used. And uh, that was also how we kind of reached out to different parts of the country and people started to write back to us saying that, you know, uh, we are fans and, uh, you know, this is what we feel and this is what we think and this is how we live. And we had people across, um, across different, uh, you know, social milieus, different gender, uh, sexuality, across, across all, uh, you know, um, all of this. And we then uh, heard from Shan, who was in Nagpur at that time. We didn't hear from him, sorry. We, we, we got to see his posts on Facebook and we were really struck by, by his post and by his, uh, you know, his passion, which was actually something that really stood out from everybody else that we, spoke, we had spoken with. And we just kind of uh, took a chance to, and we called him up over the phone and he was, um, he was like, my brother's getting married, why don't you come? Uh, you know, just come meet me uh, and see what you want to do. And literally Shabani and I are like, let's go do a recce. Let's, you know, uh, let's, let's figure this out. And the recce ended up becoming, you know, our first shoot. So, and from, I mean, once we met him, once we, then we met Balram and we met uh, Bhaskar and we realized that, you know, we don't really need to, our search is done. These are the people we want to make the film. Um, and... Just uh, some I was responses. Just add, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so was that actually Sam and I were just discussing this afternoon that, and I'm only saying this because of the poll result, that if actually we had to shoot something like a being Bhaijan today, we don't even know whether it would be Salman Khan we would pick today. I mean, because there's always a certain star or a certain person that sort of stands for a nation at a particular point in time. When we shot being Bhaijan in 2012, 2013, Salman Khan was definitely that person. And we were in fact wondering, would, would we do something around Akshay Kumar, for example? And would, like, is actually he the person who stands for today's nation? And a lot of people who have voted know that they don't like Salman Khan. I don't even know whether, it's, whether they don't like Salman Khan or he may not be relevant anymore. So it's just something I'm flagging for something that we would also like to discuss with Shohini at some point that is there a certain kind of fandom that also shifts according to where the nation goes. And she has said that she is a fan of uh, Salman Khan yeah. and yeah, some, yeah, other, some other responses coming in. Sulvi is saying she's a fan of the film, not Salman Khan. And uh, some, uh, Div Divya has said she was a fan of Salman in his early days and not anymore. So, it's also so yeah, that's actually that is also what Shabani is referring to. I think the way we look at Salman has changed today, you know, over these many years. And when we started to do our search, he was really the one at that point in time. So you said uh, he asked you to come along because his brother was uh, getting married. And I think at some level, the wedding structured the film. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Shivani? Yeah. The wedding structures the film, as in, the wedding uh, gave structure to the film in pre-production as well as post-production. Like it's because we started the shoot with the wedding. We got to meet Shan at the wedding. And actually in many ways who Shan is and the actual pathos of his position in Chinwara and the life choices he's made came out in the wedding. But it was also the first few days we were actually spending with him. So we got to see something without actually having the backstory. And then we went back and built the backstory to that wedding. 
but what you see in the actual construction of the film is that you see the whole film and then you see the wedding and it actually but yeah so the wedding always is the center point for i mean it, it was a center point for us during shoot and also during edit i think for us it was because uh, the wedding is such a uh, it's the normative reward and the normative celebration of people who made a certain life choice and when you see when because we lived with shan in his house he and his brother were two different i mean they, they they couldn't be more different right he was an it person who worked in bangalore and he was getting married to this girl and the whole village i mean the town was going to come everything but uh, this was also the moment where shan needed to say that i also exist this was also his moment to also say that i may not have made the same choices but this could also be my celebration so there was a certain fight there and there was a certain pathos there which is why the wedding became what it became in the thing and also i mean of course we were constantly like playing with the trope of ending a bollywood film with a wedding right <laughs> so but yeah. except that this is this is about who who the wedding doesn't celebrate yeah i think cinematically wedding became the nucleus for us because it was something that shan was running away from as a societal structure as well as the wedding was the moment or was the venue and the context for him to actually prove himself so the drama of a constant push and pull of that wedding was kind of one of the like the main reasons that the whole film ended up being structured around um so uh, in the beginning of the film uh, shan says we grow because we imitate you know and uh right through the film we see i mean on the outside uh he is imitating salman in fitness and in fashion uh behavior wise and action wise he also wants to get into philanthropy and uh, you know do good in society and help society but on the inside like you said before uh this is about identity and a certain kind of masculinity do you want to talk about that um yeah i guess uh you know his entire behavior from his fashion to uh, uh you know to to his body to the way he wanted to prove himself or you know as he says bring my family from middle class to upper class all of it was to prove a point and one of the things that we uh, you know we really believe in this course of shooting this film was that a lot of what shan was doing was also using salman khan to live the life that he wanted to live to give himself the identity that he wanted you know he wanted he wanted to carve out for himself so i guess that is also how fandom works right your i mean it it ends up you take from your uh, from your hero what what he can lend to your life and and this imitation i mean yeah uh, again like i would agree with sam i don't think it was an imitation just for the sake of imitation Shan was actually very clever in what he took from Salman and what he didn't. He always took what helped justify his life choices, and not the whole gamut of uh, things that Salman Khan represents. Uh, Shan was very anti anti violence, for example. He just did not condone violence. So yeah. Um. So I think we can look at a clip now and. Uh... you can discuss the clip uh, at the end of it so i'll just play it out chhoto bhaiya chhoto bhaiya hai bhaiya chhoto bhaiya hai kya कब मिलेंगे हाँ हाँ बात करवा दीजिए यही आसपास है आसपास है तो आ जाएंगे कहाँ पे आज कल मैं अभी नागपुर सूरत ये सब जगह जाना होता है 
अच्छा अच्छा में आप अभी अभी तो यहाँ अपना डायमंड जो देखा है और रियल इस्टेट इन्वेस्टर हूँ इन्वेस्टमेंट वगैरह चालू है बारह प्रॉपर्टी वगैरह बनाए हैं वहाँ पर नागपुर और आस और स्टेज शो दे रहा हूँ अभी जूनियर सलमान हेलो और ये इनसे बात करें आज भैया हेलो छोटू भैया कहाँ पे हो आप कहाँ पे हो भाई का शादी है अठारह तारीख को आपको आना है नौ बजे तक पहुँच जाना परफॉर्मेंस दे रहे हैं ना हाँ मेरे बहुत सारे दोस्त हैं सब मानते हैं मतलब जैसे कुछ रहते हैं क्रिटिसिज्म वाले रहते हैं जैसे ये वाला जो जगह है यहाँ से क्रिटिसिज्म वाला है ना तो वो ऐसे अच्छा सलमान का कौन सा मूवी आ रहा है करके ऐसा करके उन लोग वोटिंग कर रहे हैं मैं को गुस्सा आता था मैं ऐसे दाँत वगैरह ऐसा पीस लेता था मैं बोला ऐसा क्यों बोल रहे हैं मतलब ऐसे चिड़ा रहे मेरे को ऐसा शर्म आते थे यहाँ जो बिल्डिंग है ये पूरे छिंदवाड़ा की सबसे बड़ी बिल्डिंग आपको तो हो गया ये वो अभी डॉक्यूमेंट्री बन गया इनके बारे में क्या बताए तो शुरू से ही कुछ अलग ही टाइप के रहे हैं सलमान भाई को बोलो शादी करेंगे ताकि ये भी शादी करे यार सीरियसली सीरियसली ये मैं बॉय भी है ये मैं फेसबुक फ्रेंड है अरे उसने स्टेज शो किया ना तूने फेसबुक में क्यों नहीं डाला डालूंगा अभी आने वाला है अभी इसमें है मोबाइल में मैं मतलब वो डालूंगा तो फेसबुक में डालूंगा भी हम भी देख लेंगे यार लाइक तो हम तूने दिखाया नहीं हमको कभी नहीं नहीं इस बार इस बार आप यदि साढ़े आठ बजे आप शादी में आ गए तो आप लाइव परफॉर्मेंस देख सकते पहले बहुत आता था मेरे को गुस्सा गुस्सा भी आता था मैं शकी काइंड का भी था मैंने अपने आप को बहुत इम्प्रूव किया हूँ मैं साइलेंट रहने वालों में से हो गया हूँ मतलब पहले मैं बहुत बोलता था अपना भावनाओं को थोड़ा सा कंट्रोल करने लगे कंट्रोल 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 नो एक्सपेक्टेशन नो डिसअपॉइंटमेंट नो एक्सपेक्टेशन नो डिसअपॉइंटमेंट ये फॉर्मूला याद कर करके मैंने अब अपने आप को शांत कर लिया मैं बोल जो चल रहा है चलने दो अभी कुछ करने का नहीं है ये मेरा बेस्ट फ्रेंड है पीयूष संगी या मैं किसी के साथ डेट कराऊँगे छिंदवाड़ा में बता दे बता क्योंकि पहले का समय ऐसा था नहीं और ये छोटा सी आई नीड बेटर आई नीड बेटर बेटर और मेरे ये बचपन में जब इसे पूछा जाता था कि भाई तुम्हारी कितनी प्रॉपर्टी है तो ये बोलता था कि मेरे सौ एकड़ खेत है इसको भी मैं पूछता था सौ एकड़ का खेत है तो ना ये एकड़ क्या होता है फिर दादू को आगे पूछता था दादू हमारा कितना प्रॉपर्टी है मतलब तो दादू बोलते थे ये है जो घर है तो मैं बोला ये एकड़ क्या होता है वो बोले बहुत बड़ा होता है बोला तो फिर मतलब अपन लोग के पास प्रॉपर्टी नहीं है अपन लोग तो गरीब है तो ऐसा मैं सोचता था सोच सोच के मेरे माइंड में चला कि मेरे को प्रॉपर्टी बनाना है या कुछ भी मेरे पास यदि पैसा रहेगा तो प्रॉपर्टी मेरे को सिर्फ प्रॉपर्टी ही दिखता था कि मेरे को प्रॉपर्टी कैसे लेना यदि मैं रियल इस्टेट में लगाऊँ आज की डेट में रियल इस्टेट में ही सबसे ज़्यादा पैसा वो प्लस होता है तो मैंने इसलिए नॉलेज लिया और नॉलेज लेके आज मैं रियल इस्टेट में इन्वेस्ट कर रहा हूँ और कम समय में अपने फैमिली को मिडिल क्लास से अपर क्लास में लेके आ रहा हूँ So, do you want to talk about how uh, this was constructed and from whatever you got? Uh, so, actually, this scene um, was the only scene that we did not uh, shoot ourselves. Which I mean, we weren't part of this scene. Vijay, uh, our camera person, 
um, he shot this scene with Shan. So basically, the idea was to just see this um, this man's world and see uh, see the interaction that he has in Chindwara with his other with you know with the other people, and we wanted Riju to do it. Uh, at that point in time, I think it was also something that wasn't physically possible for us because we didn't have any, you know, whatever. You know, practically, it wasn't possible. And uh, so Riju sat with him and went off. But when we uh, saw the rushes, we just realized uh, that we couldn't, it, this couldn't have happened if we were part of, uh, uh, of the crew, if we were part of the making. The kind of interaction, the kind of um, sarcasm, the kind of um, upmanship that was happening in his interactions wouldn't have happened. And that did strike us. And um, I mean, a, a lot of uh, a lot of personality uh, and tropes that kind of uh, that Chan has kind of embodied in him to be able to uh, to be able to um, deal with uh, you know, with, the, with his neighborhood, with, his, with Chindwara, with the people that he kind of interacts with, kind of came out for us and set uh, the context for, the, for a large part of the film and the rest of the shooting. Um, also, I mean, just the fact that how, uh, how brave he was to, uh, to, you know, to feel this, to, um, to feel the questioning, to feel the constant, uh, you know, to bade aadmi ho ho, with that kind of a swag. So yeah, so I mean that is basically laying out the context for the uh, for the scene. But uh, if there are any questions, we would be happy to take them. Yeah. So whoever has questions, please feel free to post it in the chat box, and we can take them as they come. Um, but actually, a related question actually. Um, so we see that um, there is a sort of, if I could call it, fear of the feminine and not wanting to have feminine gestures or, you know, not even be in the business that maybe, you know, like uh, fashion designing and things like that. He's very particular about those things. Um, and also their uh, interaction with women is fairly limited or so it seems. But uh, in the other parts where, I mean, two questions actually. One is, was it conscious to have a male cinematographer? Uh, was that a conscious choice? And second, um, he still manages to open up quite a lot all three of them actually, to, to you. So how did you manage that? Uh, so yes, it was a conscious choice to have a male cinematographer. Um, it's, I, I think it was, uh, and I don't know whether, we, I don't think we've ever felt that, uh, you know, in, by the time we made Being Bhaidra, and I think one thing both Sam and I felt quite clearly is that the camera desexualized us to a great degree. And the, the, the filmmaking process also in many, many ways, um, either our gender would play, it would either play into the material or it would slowly, with as much time was spent, it would slowly become um, irrelevant. With, while shooting being Bhaijan more than our gender, it was actually the class privilege that was more dangerous. Uh, because uh, the, we were also women filmmakers from a city. I feel the fact that we were women filmmakers from a big city who spoke a particular way and looked a particular way, that, that was more tricky in negotiation as opposed to the fact that we were just women. But strangely, and this is something we've often thought about, I feel that the fact that... Um, uh, we both feel that the fact that we are, we were so urban and big city and came from such a different history, we almost became like the alien kind of figures. You know, like we were almost, like the more months went by, we were just, we were essentially just enablers of people who were actually just listening. And we were people first. And uh, the power equation also helped it helped in building this performativity, but it also in some ways helped build a distance that enabled a certain kind of what we felt was a relationship that helped us make this film. Um, also the kind of uh, time we ended up spending with Sean in his, uh, in his home with his family, 
uh, it did help in breaking certain walls. You know, the conversation started to become different from when we started. Then, you know, I mean, gradually it started to have different tones. Uh, also, the way he would speak to us had a little less distance uh, in, in, in tonality and in, you know, how much he wanted to kind of uh, uh, open up. Um, so I think time also did, did make a very, very big difference uh, while shooting it. Also, you must understand that Riju, uh, yes, it was absolutely a conscious decision to have a main cinematographer, but Riju did not have the, um, the same kind of masculine relationship that uh, Shan has been used to, right? At least in, in Chindwara. So he was also in a way, the three of us uh, were one unit for him. It's not like he saw Riju differently from me and Shivani. It was, uh, it, it, the fact that we were outsiders, we came from somewhere else, in fact, worked uh, in our favor because at, after a while, he didn't think of what we were thinking of him. So he wasn't, it, it wasn't about us judging him because he's, he was only bothered about being judged by the people in, in his life. And we were outsiders. And so in a way, it worked out so beautifully that we ended up becoming witness to his life and he let us do that. And I had a related question on performance actually. So each of these people are performing sort of a role in their own lives that is now also being sort of played out in front of your camera. So uh, at some level, the documentary is enabling in a way what Shan wanted, which is to be on camera. Um, and also in a way, his return to his hometown and sort of consolidating his image as a performer also. So for example, in this clip that we saw, he's, you know, he's going and he's saying, oh, my, there's also my performance, come for my performance. And uh, that's sort of one identity I feel he's consolidating. And the other is of sort of uh, as an investor in property and, you know, the notions of power and health, uh, sorry, wealth attached to it. So did you think so as well? Yeah, I mean, um, for, yeah, for sure there was performativity, but I guess, see, this, the, this documentary in many ways was Shan's way of finding uh, redemption for the life choices he's made uh, in his own eyes as well as in the eyes of the area and the people he grew up with. And I feel like that any search of the, any search of that nature then is not just performative. And maybe that is why we we carried on shooting with him because we also felt that there was something deeper happening here. That there, there is something that he needed to investigate for himself. Um, and the performance was an element to it. I mean, it was as much of a performance as we were performing as filmmakers, which is also Absolutely. a huge performance. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Also, we did, I mean, you, you, we must remember that we had him in, in, in the act of doing this, right? This was not something that he planned for the film. He did not plan this wedding gift of this dance for his brother because we were filming him. Uh, this is what he was doing. And we gave him a call one fine day and say, it said, okay, fine, we're going to come and, you know, see this wedding happen. And so, yes, of course, performativity happened because, you know, there was, the camera was there. But we do feel that... Uh, I mean, in essence, Shan, Balram, they, I mean, they are performers. The whole point of that wedding was to be able to perform who they are. Um, there's a question coming. So, um, Balram at some level is a fan of Shan as well. And what, you thought, what, did, what do you think about this dynamic and how you chose to depict it as well? Oh, actually, you know, that was one of the things that I forgot to say when we picked up Shan, that we were really blown mm. away by this microcosm of, uh, of, of this guy who looks, who, you know, who is passionate about Salman Khan, who uh, looks like Salman Khan, who models himself around Salman Khan and has his own fans. Uh, so that was quite incredible, actually. And Balram was a true fan of, uh, which, you know, even in the film, you realize when, uh, you know, the first thing he would tell Salman Khan is, you know, Nakur mein aapka ek, uh, hamara khud ka ek Salman hai. So, um, so yeah, that was, that was quite something for us. You know, at this point, if I could just request uh, Shohini to join in, because this is something we've had long conversations with her also, and she really helped in the mentoring and the post-production of the process. Uh, if we could unmute her and we can ask her, is that, 
um, you know, this play between fandom and masculinity uh, came later to us. For us, initially, the film was just about fandom. But the connection between fandom and masculinity happened when we watched this three-tier structure, which is we watched Shan want to be Salman and Balram not want to be Salman, but want to be Shan. So what, what was that hierarchy and chain of command and what was this masculine trope that was being inherited? Because it wasn't just this heteronormative masculinity that was being inherited. So if we could request Shohini to just uh, come in here, it would be amazing. Uh, thanks, Amreen and uh, Shabani and Yashodra for organizing this. And it's wonderful that a film that you made so long back uh, can still be debated and uh, you know talked about. So congratulations for making this film uh, once again. A couple of things I just want to say, and that is um, uh, this whole business of stardom and fandom is very complex, right? So when you first talked about this idea that, uh, you know, would you make this film today? Would you choose somebody else? I think that the reason why I liked Salman Khan was because he was not a national hero. He was actually a precarious hero. He, was, he never even had an NRI presence. You know, like uh, he didn't have a, a constituency in the diaspora till Ekta Tiger. So he was a person who was the dissenting hero, a pretty much like the angry young man uh, in, the, in the 1970s, which is why during the emergency, uh, Divar, you know, they made uh, cuts in Divar, you know, because of, you know, what he was saying uh, around labor politics. So I have always seen Salman Khan as, and the fan, I'm a fan of his, uh, of a particular moment when his uh, constituency of fans is actually the working class people. He is a hero of the single screen. He is the hero of the mohallas. And it is his own precarity that today he may be a star, tomorrow he might be in jail. And I think that is very much a part of the lure of Salman Khan. So in that regard, he's very different from the other more globalized Khans, you know, who immediately had a lot of, you know, a following in, in the diaspora. He didn't. Middle classes hated him. Salman Khan became accepted by the middle classes only after Daban, when he made a parodic kind of a film. That's when Tehelka did a cover story, various people uh, did a cover story, and you know, he suddenly became acceptable for many people. But before that, it was actually, he, was, he wouldn't even feature in the first 10 powerful people of uh, you know, film fair. The other thing is that there is a difference between liking Salman Khan the person and the Salman Khan persona. The persona is not the person because we don't know him personally, right? So the, when, when we become a fan, it's a very complex thing. And different people can like different parts of that uh, person, you know? So, so my point is that when Shan is a, you know, becomes a fan of Salman Khan, he is becoming, he is reading something into Salman Khan that I may not read. And that, that is always the lure of the star, that it is a conflicted, contradictory kind of constellation. Different people see different things in it. So your film is about a particular constituency of people. Not everybody who's a fan of Salman Khan will be like Shan. So, you know, it's, it's one slice of the story, not the entire story. And how a fan responds to Salman Khan or any star for that matter, has a lot to do with that person also. You know, the aspirations of that person. So when, uh, uh, you know, these people say Salman Khan ki bade sanskar hai. And what is interesting is that I hope everybody's noted that he is this, you know, uh, Muslim star with a fan following in Nagpur. You know, and that itself is kind of interesting that. And that all Hindu can speak yeah, to, yeah. Uh, you know, so many diverse kinds of people. Salman Khan all his life has been, uh, you know, linked up with various women. But here are these men who are kind of shunning women. And I would like people to kind of take note of that. Because uh, why, would, why would we kind of impose a certain heterosexuality on them to say that they must always be in the company of women? Uh, so I have kind of always seen these boys as somewhat queer. And I mean, not to say that they are uh, you know, uh, you know that they they believe in same sex love or something like that. But they are somebody. They are people who are moving out of some kind of a heteronormative 
No. Yeah, they're non-normative in that. They're in that non-normative. Sense. Yeah. They're non-normative. So in that regard, they are not following Salman's example of uh, iske saath ya, uske yeah. saath connection. Nothing. They just don't want to have anything to do with the women that we should not necessarily read as misogynist or exclusionary. You know. Uh, the other point is that Akshay uh, Kumar, I hope uh, if you make a film on him, it will be very different. But he is a man. He may who, not. No, he, you see, all of us have different notions of the nation right now. And he plays into a kind of notion of the nation that we may not feel uh, very fond of. So uh, I think when we say that somebody is a national hero, what do we mean by that? You know, uh, uh, who is he representing really? So he, he must be representing some people, but I'm sure he's not representing the, the precarious people of this country. Yeah. So, so uh, in fact, I want to go on and on. Yeah, no, no. I want to actually uh, like push this a little bit. It's also because Sam and I have been trying to articulate this. I mean, it's been seven years since we shot Bhai Jan. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and the nation has become, as you said, there are many nations now. And the last three months, it has, because we have reached such a, crazy critical point now to be able to articulate what this nation is. Today, do you feel there is a dissenting hero? Do you feel there is anybody who is able to challenge any kind of hegemonic structure which through cinema? It's, it's something we are struggling with, the, which is why we are asking. Like, because we feel, you're absolutely right. I mean, we would never have made a film on Akshay Kumar because it's just way too boring. Salman Khan was interesting because he encompassed all of I these can't things. I can't even imagine that the two of you <laughs> spent two days with him. I mean, I think, I think for us, the fact that Salman Khan spoke to the periphery was, was the biggest attraction, right? And I mean, that I don't know. He has lost now. That yeah. is what he has lost yeah. now. Yeah. He's no longer on the periphery. Yeah. So, uh, and the, the thing is that I, I often wonder, because now we are in this multiplex moment. The moment of the single screen is gone, right? So I'm not even sure whether a film like Tere Naam would be the kind of a success that it was at, at, at one time. So I, 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 I need to think about this a little more about what you said, but no dissenting hero really comes to my mind right now, but you might have dissenting films and a dissenting performance, but whether the persona itself is like, uh, you know, uh, an anti-establishment, I'm not sure. Also, yeah, I think because, with the digital yeah. platform, there yeah. will be films. There are different kinds of films yes. now, but it's really about but that fandom. Very, very niche, you know? You know? Yes. They're, exactly. They're very niche. So is there a hero which that, you know, with that kind of a following and that kind of a passionate fandom uh, who, who actually can take a chance to say something? Salman Khan is the last single screen hero, really, because the others migrated very comfortably uh, yeah. to the, you know, to the diaspora and became part of this globalized, uh, you know, transnational flow, etc. Uh, for the longest time, Salman Khan wasn't. And uh, now that he has become, he, I, to my mind, is less interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have some more questions coming in. So this one is from Sahil uh, on Facebook. Um, he, has, he says, since you've, wist, uh, you've witnessed his life, um, are you still connected with him and his story? And if so, uh, what form has that relationship taken now? And how has the film changed him? Uh, we started with Sean on Facebook and we still interact with him on Facebook. He is in Dubai now. Um, and um, uh, he's doing a lot of shows there. He lives there. He's been there for quite a few years now. I think it's been three years. I, I, I think I'm not so sure. Uh, but off late, uh, uh, you know, when we try to contact him for this particular screening, uh, you know, we haven't heard back. But uh, that is what we know of him right now. Um, there was and one. how the film, I mean, if how the film changed him, I mean, we, we only, we can only tell you what we knew soon after the film, which was the first two years after the film came out. Uh, Shan, uh, uh, sort of consolidated a career as um, a Salman Khan lookalike. So even after the verdict came out, uh, there were a lot of recreations which were on various news channels. So, so Shan would be uh, cast in that. Uh, then even in Dubai, he had, uh, he, as till we knew last, had a proper career as a Salman Khan lookalike. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was in many ways the life that he at that point wanted. 
Uh, there's one more question. Um, since, I mean, you've mentioned you also lived with the family. Um, what, uh, why haven't you, uh, so this is a question that's come, um, why haven't you um, uh, featured the sister and the mother in the film? We have actually featured. As in, they don't I mean, speak. The... Yeah, we featured um, them exactly we... how Shan features them yeah. in his life. We were trying to create Shan's world. This exactly. was Shan's world. This is yeah. how this is how it was. Uh, it, our instinct was, of course, to do long conversations and interviews with the mother and the sister, which we did. But in edit, we realized that that was not reflecting Shan's reality. That was us as women filmmakers who had gone in and saying, "But what about and how, how is it, how is it that your brother does this and so on yeah. and so forth?" Yeah, I think uh, it was just. I mean, when we were shooting, of course, we shot with everyone. We, we shot, we interviewed the brother as well. We interviewed the brother, the father, the, you know, the, the entire family. But at the end of it, it, it's not this 360 degree view that we wanted to, you know, where you have all perspectives and everything is, was in context to Shan for us. And that was the story. So, so in a way, a lot of things uh, in the film, I mean, you know, we constantly get questions about, uh, about the legal cases against Salman Khan and uh, how that is not part of the film. Uh, and, you know, did we not speak about that? But we did. We, we spoke to Shan, we spoke to Balram Bhaskar, and we spoke about it quite extensively. But at the end of it, it is their story. And it is, I mean, how relevant that legal case was for them, then made us decide if it needs to be in this narrative or not. Uh, perhaps we can play the second clip now and then discuss yeah. that after. Yeah. 
We have a related question actually uh, from Facebook from uh, Chantita Mukherjee. Uh, she is asking if, um, she is just curious, was Shan and friends performance at the wedding deliberately sabotaged? Uh, by whom and why? Could you say that again, Shan's? A performance if it was deliberately uh, sabotaged and by whom and why? How interesting. It's a very interesting reading because there was a moment during the shoot of this scene and this time uh, that Shan and then us also believed that, that basically they didn't want him to go on stage. But I would, I guess, I don't know, and Sam, you can add here, like, I would say sabotage is a wrong word, but maybe what it showed was uh, the priorities. Yeah. And... Uh, how what actually unfolded was that there's a 10 p.m. curfew on music and the Bharat, which is his own, his own brother's Bharat actually, kept waiting outside, kept dancing and waiting outside, kept dancing and waiting outside. And he kept requesting his family, let the Bharat in so I can do my performance before the 10 p.m. Uh, thing Shut happens. Down. But they didn't come in. And they kept waiting outside and they kept dancing outside. And everything that happens in Indian weddings, that whatever happens, that negotiation between the girl side and boy side, that happens, kept happening. 
and Shan got more and more anxious. Now, is that sabotage? See, I, I still think it's an interesting way of putting it. But yes, there was a definite uh, prioritization, prioritizing of a certain ritual over another ritual. This ritual, which was very important for Shan, was not at all important for his family. Everything Shan did for his performance, he did it on his own. From sourcing of the costumes to the music to arranging of the stage, he did it on his own. There was not one family member that was invested in this performance. But you and know, having yet, so, sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ha having said that, now that you know, you say sabotage, and I love conspiracy theories. <laughs> I, you know, it's it's just uh, well, his parents, uh, they were not very, uh, they weren't really looking forward to the performance, and yeah. they were kind of embarrassed of it. And uh, they did try to coax him out of it many times. And then the fact that there was this, you know, camera unit that was going everywhere with him kind of stopped them. So, so yes, agreeing with Chabani, I don't think it was like a planned sabotage. But yeah, it was uh, very, I think they were uh, subtly letting it be. You know, if you don't have to deal with it, we don't, we don't have to really finish this barat at this point. It's, it was a typical wedding display of where you only display your successful children and your successful mm -hmm. grandchildren and your, that, that's what Indian weddings are, right? And you hide everything else. And this is actually what they wanted. They wanted Shan to be the trooper who helped out in the wedding arrangement. But yeah, there was a lot of embarrassment around him taking the stage. Uh, it, and which uh, is Shan why also, want... yeah. Go ahead. I'll, I'll... No, I was just saying, which is also we edited it in, in this way because for us, it was really him claiming his space in this very normative wedding tradition. Also for him, uh, performing O Jane Jana had to be accompanied with this entire uh, announcement that this is his gift to his, uh, to his brother, which never happened because he didn't get to perform that finale. Uh, there's just a comment uh, here on Zoom uh, from Archita Chamla. She says she doesn't really have a question, but more of a comment. She says, thanks for making this. Being Bhaijan has given me a new perspective about these particular kind of films that Salman does. I was the audience who didn't like Salman because of the kind of miso misogynist films he does. Um, and off-screen scandals and his off-screen scandals as well. Not that I'm still a fan of his, but this film taught me to keep my critique and ideologies aside and derive pleasure out of Shan's slice of life uh, represented here, keeping his chauvinistic ideologies aside. The film worked as an eye-opener for me as to why Salman has such a huge following and why my parents always go for his first day first show of every film, so thank you. Um, Ramani is saying, uh, I'm a big fan of... Um, Bajrangi Bhaijan, the film, and of course, Salman's work. In the last clip, uh, he hasn't seen the film. We see his, uh, this character walking towards the stage and I really liked watching the film, watching him. I was surprised that I liked it uh, and all the associations I made and how those associations are created even for Salman. How oh, nice, thank you. Um, I, so I think the earlier, uh, the earlier uh, comment that you read, uh, Yasho, I think that's really wonderful because, you know, have not, I mean, somewhere uh, a lot of us, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like Salman Khan and then they kind of dismiss, uh, uh, dismiss the film just as that. But the fact that, you know, there is there's something much more about Salman Khan that needs to be understood to understand our own people to understand these fans. And it's not about, you know, if you are a personal fan or not of the hero. Uh, Surbhi is saying this is where she thinks uh, Shohini's point is very important. Uh, it is this queer masculinity that the family is probably uncomfortable with, uh, not the machismo. The film is important because it is able to nuance the reading of masculinity. And she says we equate Salman Khan with machismo, but fans are reading masculinity differently in multiple ways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very nicely put, Surbhi, actually. And Thanks, Surbhi. Yeah. Also, no, yeah. go ahead. No, I was just saying that uh, it, this was such a thing for us also, right? Because we went in thinking, oh God, what is this machismo kind of Salman, Salman films and this taking of the shirt and so on and so forth. But it's just it it's been such a long process for us to even also realize that uh, codes and symbols of masculinity may not actually carry the whole story that maybe there are certain symbols that embody a whole other different narrative maybe uh, when 
like masses of men take off their shirts in solidarity with Salman Khan, it cannot only be seen as machismo. Maybe there is, maybe there's a, maybe there are intimacies playing out. Maybe there are all kinds of, I mean, and queer because queer is such a beautiful word because it encompasses intimacies that we don't even have language for. Um, so yeah, thank you, Surbhi. Um, I have a question about. Um, so you choose to record, you know, uh, this playing out of whatever is happening in front of the camera, and you intervene fairly little. Um, so when was this choice made that you will keep this bit of distance and not really sort of uh, intervene uh, with whatever is happening in front of the camera? Or question and or challenge it's, what they're it's, saying? It's not really, uh, the fa I mean, it's not that we did not intervene. Uh, we, did, yeah. we did intervene in quite a few places. And of course, we have intervened as as the makers of this film, right? I mean, um, uh, this is us and how we saw uh, uh, Sean and, and his life. Uh, but I think uh, it wasn't... And Shuman, if you want to add something to the fact that even, even you know, when we were speaking to him about, um, about, about the, his, the women and the way he looks at women, in fact, that was a point where we couldn't help but, you know, intervene and just kind of put our perspective. But the idea was not to be, uh, uh, was not to challenge Shan, was not to be in conflict with Shan. The idea was to understand Shan. And I think as documentary filmmakers, and this is really uh, our, what our idea of uh, film, filmmaking at that point was, was to listen, was to listen, to understand and to absorb. And... Uh, and the way we perceived Shan comes out in the edit anyway. So it's not like, you know, that, that, that conversation did not happen. Yeah, I mean, we intervene quite a bit, actually. I think like we are, if, if, if the spectrum of documentary filmmaking is there is no such thing as fly on the wall and the camera itself is an intervention to Michael Moore, if let's say for shorthand, that's the person, like we are pretty much like that side of the axis. We intervene quite a bit. Like we sort of in post-production, like most documentary filmmakers, we do a construction of what we witnessed, not exactly. what, yeah. like it's, it, this, what, what being Bhaijan is, is not necessarily what the reality of Shan Balram Bhaskar is. It is the reality we saw. And that is definitely an intervention. Uh, maybe if somebody else went and met the same three people, it would have been an entirely different film. It wouldn't have been this film. They may have seen a reality that we just haven't seen and can't see. Exactly. And in fact, Shivani and I were discussing this morning that when we were shooting this scene, the last scene uh, of the wedding, it, we had a very uh, lean crew, right? It was just the three of us shooting this and we had to shoot these scenes. Uh, you know, that was ha that were happening simultaneously, and we were constantly, you know, running between scenes, running between uh, locations, and we kind of, uh, you know, were shouting at each other, saying, you know, he's come, he's come, you know, he's gonna uh, get on stage, and you know, we had our own style of uh, communicating, and the tension that Shan felt was witnessed by us. Uh, we. Uh, uh, we were part of it as as much as you know his, the, the, all the boys that were there with him, and that tension is what we wanted to uh, translate cinematically when we started to edit the scene. You know, the constant juxtaposition was basically because of that to kind of uh, transfer what we felt. So, if you really see the film, it is an embodiment of not only sh uh, the three of them, but but we are part of the mix. So, in that sense, full intervention. Um, so Ruby is just adding to my comment. She says the filmmakers did not uh, take an observational role. They were participating in the moment, but not just challenging. They were curious and non-judgmental. Thank you, Surabhi. Thank you, Surabhi. Um, I think we're almost done, but uh, one last question. Uh, in, to your knowledge, has Salman Khan seen this? And uh, if yes, what was his reaction? <laughs> oh God, this is a saga. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we've been told that he has, and then, you know, but it hasn't really been, we, basically we tried, we tried to show him the film, uh, but he never did respond to us. We also sent different agents 
uh, and different people. Including, so including Kabir Khan. <laughs> including Kabir Khan, so that yeah. you won't see the film. So we don't really know if he has, but I mean, of course he hasn't said it. Uh, one last comment since it's coming from Nandini Dhawan. Uh, do you think the film would work as a narrative, as in the same concept of the impact that Salman has had on men, but depicted differently? Of course, each film style has di distinct features, but I just had the thought while watching the documentary that if this were a feature film, I would go and watch it in theaters. I absolutely love the film. Congrats, uh, Shabani and Sandini. Thank you. So I think uh, we can close it there. Thank you so much. Can I, for... say, that, yes, I just please. say that please go watch documentaries in theaters too, if theaters <laughs> ever open again. Please do. Otherwise, Netflix is fine. <laughs> just watch documentaries. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Shabani, Samreen. Thank you, Shohini, for joining in. Uh, and the rest of you on Zoom and on Facebook. Uh, just a quick announcement. Um, so the next film... Uh, we'll be discussing is called The House on Gulmoha Avenue. The film is available on the PSPT YouTube channel. Uh, Samina Mishra, the director, will join us for a conversation on 25th June at 6 p.m. Uh, follow the IHS social media handles for updates or register with us if you haven't already. The registration link will be in the chat box on Zoom and the comment section on Facebook. Thanks everyone again. Uh, hope to see you next month. Have a good night. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, IHS, for showing us the film and for everybody who joined in. It's just very heartening to know that people are still interested in being Bhaijan and it still makes sense. It surprises us. The country <laughs> continues to change. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shohini. As always. Thank you.